Welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today we're going to be talking about Earl the Miststalker. Now, Earl the Miststalker is quite possibly one of the most favorited one-man army style decks right after Rafik. I kind of like Earl though because he's got the built-in hexproof. The ability, I mean, he's a five-man of five-five, which is really good. We don't get a lot of that. And he gets plus two, plus two for each aura attached to him. And he's got hexproof. Man, this guy can be a beast. Let's look at it. Here's what I got. First, I want to go through, obviously, we've got the the array of lands. It's He's three colors, so we've got all, all, all the lands you would think about. Of course, got to have got to have your fetches or I should say the poor man's fetches basic lands I, I'm running four of each because you always got to run your basics and creatures now he is a one-man army but since most of the deck is enchantments auras it lends itself to some other creatures like say Herald of the Pantheon it makes your enchantment spells cost one less. Every time you cast an enchantment, you gain a life. Pretty good guys, two manas, early to early game. We also got the Enchantress Sisters. Of course, we've got both the white and the green because, you know, why not? I would love to play an aura and draw a card or two. Sounds good. Of course, we have the Umbra Mystic because Totem Armor... I don't know if <laughs> I think totem armor turned out to be way more powerful than they thought it would be. So we're going to see how fast this thing will zoom. Just for those of y'all that ha hadn't seen her before. Come on, jump in there. Focus anytime now. She gives all your auras totem armor that way if somebody does board wipe you can just sack an aura and he doesn't die it's really crazy now the kitsune mystic is a card not a lot of people run when he starts off at a four mana two three at the end of turn if he's enchanted by two or more enchantments he flips and when he flips bam which is not transforming you get to spend one mana and move around enchantments. Now this becomes valuable on maybe you've got because our all of our removal is enchantment removal as well, pacifisms and what have you. So you can move them around with this guy. Or if you just want to play politics and to make somebody else's creature bigger with some of your R's, that works too. Now he is half no he's not even half he's almost half of our general he just gets plus two plus two for each aura attached to it which is a well he's definitively better than the Yavimaya enchantress in this deck now she gets it for each enchantment in play which we do have some standalone i.e. global enchantments is what they used to call them but then, of course, we have the Rabid Wombat. Rabid Wombat gets plus two, plus two for each enchantment on it. And he has Vigilant. Rabid Wombat is the original card for this ability. And it originally came out in Legends. Of course, this is a Chronicles version. I, I think it's kind of funny. It fits in here. If for some reason... Your general gets, I don't know, pacified or what have you. Then, of course, we have the Thran Golem. I like the Thran Golem because I think Morrow just mentioned this in one of his, his podcasts. The a 5 mana 3 3, meh, not that good. But as long as he's enchanted, he gets all these abilities. What is that? 1, 2, 3, 4 abilities, all of which are good. Wow. I like me some Thran Golem. It's like Karn's long-lost brother. 
I run one artifact in the entire deck, which I've thought hard about since I'm only running one artifact, running a lot of artifact hate. I just can't find the room. Earl is a... You're going all in on his ability. I mean, that's what you're doing. You are all in on the Ural ability. The fact that he's going to be huge, that he's going to be hexproof, and you find ways to make him unblockable, and you one-shot people. That's just what it is. So that's why I don't have a whole lot of hate in here for other decks, because it's got to be focused. Even if you get one of your other creatures, if for some reason Earl is out of the picture, with with this and all the other cards, you can turn anything into a monster. Now, let's go, let's talk enchantments. We have Unflinching Courage. I know some of y'all remember Armadillo Cloak, the equipment. The This virtually has the same text on it. I really think they missed the boat here. They should have called this the, let's see, the other one was the, um, oh yeah, yeah, Armadillo Cloak. I'm thinking of the equipment. We got to Bear Umbra, because nothing's cooler than after, you, when you attack, you get to untap all your lands. That's pretty sweet. I, uh, I hear that protection from creatures is pretty good. Plus one, plus one, and can't be blocked. Awesome. And I love these, simply because they do. He is white and green, so you get the indestructible and the flying. I, I wow. Rancor. R Rancor has been absolutely swinging games for as long as it's been printed. I believe this card is played in every single format it exists in. One mana for a 2-0 trample that comes back to your hand. Wow. There's the uh, Armadillo Cloak. We have Indestructibility here again because people are going to be gunning for your general, man. And if you give it Indestructibility, that seems good. Alpha Authority... I'm moving around too much and ain't want to focus. There it is. Enchanted creature has hexproof and can't be blocked by more than one creature. That's pretty good. We have plus two, plus two, and trample as long as you control a red permanent. We have plus two, plus two, and first strike as long as you control a white permanent. We have, of course, of course, the totem armors. Plus one, plus one, and reach. Now this one just gives it trample and haste, but I really like it simply because trample. Very few of these actually do give it trample, so I really like messenger speed. We have Mark of Fury. Mark of Fury is really, really awesome simply because it's a, it's an aura. One mana. Enchanted creature gains haste, but at the end of the turn, you return this back to your hand, so you get another cast trigger next turn when you cast it again. It's not about. This is more about the card draw with the enchantresses that we saw. Here again, it meets both criteria. Plus uh, fire breathing. Angelic Destiny. Angelic Destiny is a really good one too. 4-4 four, four, flying first strike. What? And it comes back? Dang. Unquestioned Authority. I like this one because you get to draw a card when you play it. And it does give you protection from creatures. I've been using this one in forever. When you just got to get general damage through. Except no substitute. Battle Mastery. 
because double strike is something your general should have. Here we have another defensive enchantment. Of course, it's just one mana to get something where it cannot attack. Ancestral Mask may be one of the most powerful commons that I've ever seen, especially for this deck. For this deck, this is your, more times than not, this is your win con. You just play it and you just win. Plus two, plus two for each other enchantment in play. Wow. Of course, we've got the Journey to Nowhere for removal. We have Dragon Grip. That gets us first strike and plus two. As I said, not all of them are auras. We've got some straight enchantments of Collective Blessing just to, to give your team a permanent giant growth. I like it. I like it. I, when I first saw print, I, I was really worried about the six mana price tag. But for a permanent giant growth, yeah, it's not bad. I was at Rune Mark, of course, plus two, plus two, and what is that? Vigilance? That sounds good. Plus three, three in Vigilance on the Umbra. Plus oh four in the Totem Armor. Which this gets really good if somebody plops down a door and lightning talons is of course plus three in first strike. Predatory urge. Now this one does some work here. I don't know if this has been keyworded to fight just yet. It might be, but your creature's just about always going to be bigger than theirs. And thanks to the many versions of Vigilance that we have, you'll be able to swing with the Umbra, or t t with the Earl. I said Umbra. Swing with the Earl, and then at the end, to keep him for a blocker, at, at the end of your opponent's turn, hey, uh, I'm going to tap my dude, kill your only blocker, GG. Spectre Award. I really like how they worded that. Plus two, plus two, and has protection from all colors, but it doesn't remove auras. Sweet. Of course, we got to have the O ring. That makes just a crazy amount of tokens. Enchanted creature has tap, put a million one one elemental creature haste tokens into play and remove them from the game, where X is its power. Wow. This is if somehow they do fix it to where you cannot attack with your guy. You've got other options. And at four mana, it's not bad. It's not bad at all, especially when you've got a crazy big guy. Now, Flicker Form, here again, is one of those... Of course, all Flickers are... You blink him out, and you blink him back in, and the beautiful part here is that you get to keep the auras attached to him. That's amazing. Uh, because Arcane Lighthouse and Glaring Spotlight are a thing to remove hexproof. You can actually blink him out and in. The auras come with him. All's good in the neighborhood, and you commence to beat and face the next turn at whoever did that to you. Broken Fall. I like me some Broken Fall. This is what, Tempest? It's just a three mana enchantment, but you get to bounce this to your hand to regenerate a dude. A lot of times I'm just bouncing it to my hand anyway and recasting it to get card draw triggers. Of course, we got the Holy Mantle. Another Protection from Creatures card. Feral Invocation. Now, this is my version of like the combat trick giant growth simply because it does have flash and it gives him plus two and he gives himself plus two and then the equipments. There's a whole bunch of, of actual combat math when it comes to but once that math is done and they feel like they can block and not die to trample oh look, I'm at nine, you know, bam! Here it is. It's really good. Why, Johnny Tyler, 
the madcap. This guy You'll have to forgive me. I'm still learning how to operate my new toy here. Plus three, plus oh, can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. Which is menace now. Mana Bloom. That's a lot of words. Mana Bloom's really good. It, it You can put mana on layaway. I really like it. And once you get the counters all, off of it, it actually comes back to your hand, so you get to recast it again. Really, really like it. Now, we have to talk about the armor. Plus one for each other enchantment. Exoskeletal armor. That's pretty good. Plus X for the number of dead dudes. That seems really good. Now, since we are, of course, we got our Faith Fetters. We're casting enchantments. We might as well be getting 4-4 four, four Angels out of them. Seems good. Another dude that was left out here of the, of the dude stack was uh, the old Brood Keeper here. 2-2 two, two Dragons. Seemed good. Hyena Umbra. Got to get that first one to first strike. Of, of course, Pacifism. And we're going to give all of our guys haste because maybe we've got a whole bunch of uh, angels or dragon tokens, what have you. Now, Glacial Plating. I'm going to bring this one up here to show you. Cumulative Upkeep, I believe, a lot of times gets a real, real bad rap. It does cost more. Let's face it, in this deck, you're not really doing anything else. Once you are... Once you're headed down this road, I mean, you're going full blast. So, it's a four-mana creature enchantment. It's got a cumulative upkeep of a snow. Of course, my basics are snow. And... It gets plus three, plus three for each age counter on it. Now, the way Cube of Upkeep works is just so you ain't got to read that. To win your upkeep, it gets an age counter. You you pay the upkeep cost for each age counter on it. So it's going to cost one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. But I really like what Cold Snap did with age counters and making the card better the longer it sticks around. This is nuts after, I mean, even two turns. It's... More times than not, if you draw this, before you have to worry about paying an absorbent upkeep, you're going to be winning. Love the glacial plating. I also, this is kind of a, well, I don't know any other way to put it. Oath of Legions is pretty much a land tax everybody can use, except it just puts it straight into play. During everybody's upkeep, somebody's got more land. They go and they get a land, they plop it into play. It's basic, but you know what? I like the Oath of Legis. Now we got our <laughs> whopping four pack of sorceries. Obviously, we're going to have three dreams to go and get three auras. We have plea for guidance to go and get two enchantments. Open the armory goes and gets one and then open the vaults if somebody does manage to mill you or send them all to the graveyard whatever open the vaults just brings them right back all artifact enchantment cards from graveyards in the battlefield now of course the shroom player is going to love you for the rest of their life well until they pummel you in the face with infinite thopters but um that is Earl. I have a blast playing him. There's uh, I know a couple guys in, in the play group got Earl. It's it does tend to draw some hate after the second, third game to where you're just one shotting people left and right. 
Um, but thankfully, there's not a whole lot. Of, uh, yeah, there, he's going to get killed a bunch. You're going to have to pay an exorbitant amount of, of commander tax on him. But he's he's really good. I like him. That's all I've got for today. I appreciate y'all watching. And let me know what you think in the comments down below. Please like, subscribe, watch the other videos. Uh, spread the word. If there's anything you're looking for you'd like me to cover, please just let me know in the comments below. I appreciate you watching. Let's shuffle and cut, people.